this your boy DJ Academics, and now let me have a conversation with y'all real quick, man. Is it really worth being a gangster rapper these days? Just Let's just talk economics. Number one, you get out the hood. You rap to get out the hood, and while you're in the hood, you're doing all type of fuckery. You're toting guns. You're shooting at the ops. You're with the shits. But eventually, you're saying you're rapping to get out the hood, and you're trying to move off Coon Block if you live in Chirac, and you're trying to become affluent. If you don't know what affluent means, it means wealthy. Now, the thing is, because you still celebrate a life of coonery, you constantly go out of your way to show people that you're with, you're with the shits. So on social media, you probably post up guns. You still celebrate that gang life. You post other incriminating paraphernalia online. And oh, not to mention, you still screaming gang or threatening to kill the ops on social media in front of hundreds of thousands of people. Now, because of that. No company will publicly endorse you, so no endorsements, no type of sponsorships. Throw that money out the window. Now, maybe for a gangster rapper, they're not selling that much records. Chief Keith, he's probably the top at the, the new age with the shits nigga, and um, he sold 50,000 records. He's not recouping off that. Interscope, he will never recoup off that album unless he goes at least half a million or a million. That's before he sees a penny back. So, he got a advance that's probably gone. Now he's not recouping off the album. So how could Chief Keith make money? No endorsements. You're not recouping off the album that you're selling. How could you make money? Now, for any other rapper, it would be by touring. You could perform the hits that you've put out or the songs that you've put out and the fan base you've got, you could take advantage of. Now, other than performing, we got merchandising. Most people don't want to do merchandising because Negroes don't want to get... Negroes don't want to get too organized, right? So n- niggas just want to show up high, off the lean. Um, they want to perform, have mumble a couple songs on stage, jump around with their pants sagging, fuck a couple groupies, collect a fifteen thousand or twenty thousand dollar payday. Pretty good, right? Life of a gangster rapper. However, here's the downfall because it cut- gets to a point where a lot of venues in a lot of cities stop fucking with you because you're a gangster rapper. That's what I'm saying. How really beneficial is it to be a gangster rapper? The average chance the rapper who's not into this gangster shit, but not by no means is he like a bitch nigga, but he's not rapping or claiming gang life. He's making tons of money because he's on tour everywhere. He's going to colleges all over the damn place. Now, it's, this is the same way like people like J. Cole came up. But now, I say all that to say because our Chief Keith, he's fucking on tour. He's on tour and his tour came to the East Coast. Now, he was supposed to be in New York on Friday. He was supposed to be in New Jersey on Saturday. And he's supposed to be in Philly on Sunday. Now, the thing is, everybody, because they know this image of Chief Keith, So every other localized goon, the top goons of each area, they want to get their clout up. Because you got to remember, in this whole Savage game, you got to get your clout up by beating one of the underbosses. Or you got to defeat one of the top niggas to get to the next level, unlock a new weapon. So, he goes to New York. First and foremost, in New York, there's something called the Hip Hop Police. Hip Hop Police, they told the venue. And this is, this is why I'm saying it's not beneficial. It's not, at least economically, it's definitely not advantageous to be a gangster rapper if you could pick. He shows up to New York, and most venues don't want to fuck with gangster rap. You know why? Because most likely there's going to be a fight. There's going to be some type of shooting. Somebody's going to get killed. Somebody's going to get wounded. That's probably not even in the melee, right? So that person's then going to look at the venue like, yo, keep it real. It's because of your security why I got shot my ass. So I need to sue you, so pay me a couple million. So most clubs take out insurance. But if you're a club that you don't want that type of trouble in your life, you're like, ah, is it really worth booking a chief keep? Because now you got to not only get more security because you it's going to come down to a lawsuit eventually. So you got to get more security. You got to get um fucking uh, uh, make sure your, your whole insurance, make sure all your licenses are correct because police is going to eventually run up in that shit. So it really makes it harder for yourself. Now, on top of that, the police usually know what type of energy it's about to bring to their city. And the police never want crime to happen within their city. That's where they're getting paid. So to keep it real, if they could hope for it, they'd be like, hey, we don't care about if you commit crime. Don't commit it within our jurisdiction. That when we have to go investigate shit, it's not a bunch of niggas that don't live here doing the crime. So the the, uh, police people, they usually go to the club owners and say, yo, listen, you are scheduling Chief Keith to come here. There's probably going to be some violence here. If you continue with this concert, and this is exactly went down in Brooklyn, and I'm getting 
I'm getting sources that are telling me the exact thing. I got audio and all type of other confirmation because that concert was, of course, canceled at the last minute. The police are telling them, listen, you want to do this? We will be probably raiding your y- y- the fucking club. At some time during the night, there's going to be obviously some, you know, the police move. Somebody's going to call. They're going to raid the club. And not only are they going to raid the club. And this is what's make the uh, club owner say, fuck it. We don't need these problems in our life. The police is going to come in. It's going to check the liquor license. He's going to check all the facilities to make sure the uh, um, the health department don't need to be running up in that shit. Going to check everybody in there that they're of age, that no one underage got in there. So there's no underage drinking. See if there's any type of fines or any type of uh, other uh, fees they could get out of the, 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 the fucking club. So what's the point of even doing a concert? Because it's going to bring you more headaches than profit. The, don't a Chief Keef concert at the end of the day is not fucking that profitable same thing with little Dirk, all, all the rest of the gangster rappers so that happened in brooklyn so the it was supposed to perform that shit got canceled thrown out the window chief keith came out they probably smoked some loud smoked some reggie with a couple niggas from brooklyn and probably yelled squad gang 300 a whole bunch of whole bunch of times but as far as getting paid for that concert negative now apparently he was also supposed to perform in new jersey the day after and apparently there was more drama with that, except this time it wasn't the police putting pressure on. Apparently, other top goons around the New Jersey area was trying to test Chief Keith to see if he's with the shits. <sighs> Get my drift. You can't really profit off the fame and the success you've kind of accumulated because you can't tour. Because everybody has a super macho image of you. They think you're riding around with your fucking gun. You can't just show up like a regular rapper. Now you missed out on one paycheck and then another paycheck's compromised because everybody at the venue is showing up saying, fuck it, I'm going to make I'm going to make myself Internet famous by robbing Chief Keith. Now, everything's all, all out of whack because that's a, that particular venue is not going to be changing up what they're doing for you. Now, as I said, trouble in New Jersey and then he's going to Philly. Now, if you think about it, if he's going to three venues, two are canceled. Come on now. And he's supposed to be performing at a whole bunch of venues otherwise. But seriously, as I said, what's the point? If you're a gangster rapper, you're probably losing out here. And you're losing monetarily because you're doing it to yourself. Now, I could tell you a personal story. And this is how hard it is to be a gangster rapper. Right now, I'm a DJ, right? I tried to bring and I have a real good relationship with a lot of universities because I mostly DJ at colleges. Now, at one college, I tried to bring Waka Flocka there. Someone who was his rep. I forgot. Uh, was his? I believe. I'm not sure. Was it Def Jam? Whoever his uh, label it was, we had a rep that reached out to us through someone else I knew through the radio station. He wanted to come through, do a meet and greet. Meet and greet basically is, yo, come through, sign a bunch of autographs, shake hands, take pictures, it get, and give out promotional items. It gets your at least cloud up or uh, your buzz up for people who might buy your album or buy your project that's coming out next. So labels always try to do this. It's the same thing. They'll be like, hey, come out to this store and they'll be having an album sign. It's the same shit. Now, here's the thing. So I'm like, all right, cool. So we're going to get Waka Flocka to come on campus for these college kids who really love Waka Flocka for free. He's going to take pictures with them for their Instagrams and he's going to sign their shit. I'm like, this is a fucking win. Great. I'm like, OK, let me go. Go ahead and go get this set up. I'm at the university and I'm like, all right, cool. I need to get a space for him to be set up. I need to at least figure out a, a big enough space where, because it's probably going to be a line. It's thousands of people that go to university, probably thousands of people that also know him at that university. Now, the thing is, I'm calling all type of people, including directors who own buildings or spaces to make sure everything is clear. And I'm kind of, it's kind of last minute because they hit me up last minute because I think he had a concert that day that was canceled and he, they were looking for something for him to do while he was in the area. Now, I'm calling all type of people to get some, some type of uh, venue located for him on campus where he could be and where we could kind of have some type of orderly line. Now, everything is going on well. The, the people that I'm telling him about Waka Flock, I'm like, yo, I'm telling like directors of buildings and like campuses like, yo, I got this guy. He's an entertainer. He's going to come to the school. You don't have to worry about a fee. He's coming free. He just needs somewhere to be. And they're like, oh, Waka Flocka. And even one, one of the ladies were like, yo. I don't even know who this, the fuck this, this Walka Flocka guy is, but uh, apparently everybody on my staff is excited that you're about to bring him here. So cool. Now, so I'm thinking, great, this, this white chick don't even know who the fuck Walka Flocka is. I'm bringing him to campus. Win. Now, 
here where, here's where it goes severely left. At most of these colleges, and that's why you'll never see a fucking Chief Key for a Waka Flocka performing at a college unless the college is not shit. Because all colleges have something what's called either police department or public safety or both. Now, when they have high profile people come on campus, they do extensive background check. You can't bring criminals around college students in a college environment. Now, it's the same reason why people have all type of debates on who should perform. Who should even um give speeches at a commencement? Like you don't, p- people don't want anybody with a questionable past to give a commencement speech. So they're not gonna have a rapper who's been rapping about killing people and actually charged in shootouts or alleged in shootouts coming to the campus. Now the police department called me up and they told me and it was they were dead serious. With they, they said, listen, hey, we got word and we got confirmation through the directors that you talked to. You were trying to get a artist on campus. And we understand that his name is Waka Flocka. Is that true? And I'm like, yes, it's Waka Flocka. And he said, listen, hey, we did a preliminary background check because we haven't fully done background check. It's only been like a couple hours. And he said, listen, if you bring this guy on campus, he will be escorted off by the police. He is not allowed on campus, not on, just because of the preliminary report. Number one, he's not allowed to perform in like two states, which I had no idea about. Apparently, like, he's not allowed to perform in Virginia in another state because he went there and there was a shootout. And apparently, he is a felon and he's on probation, as I've told you guys before with the love and hip hop shit. So they were like, yeah, he's not coming on here. And they said, if he comes on, we're going to escort him the fuck off campus and we're going to serve him with a notice that he will be trespassing next time. So he will be arrested if he came back on campus. And they told me. If you brought him on campus, we will not be doing any more business with you. So, in short, I had to fucking cancel it. And now, that's the difference between, and, and don't get me wrong, there's been tons of, tons of entertainers that goes to campuses or college campuses. But when it comes to people like Chief Keef, Waka Flocka, Gucci Man, they're not going to be allowed. And that's what I'm saying for the people who could be, they're famous, they're rich, to kind of extend the amount of ways they can make money they really can't because nobody wants that fucking trouble so what do you guys think about this chief keith look like he's having a hard time touring on the east coast he's only doing a couple of clubs it's local clubs the clubs is not holding more than three thousand people i promise you so he's not like he's selling out a fucking ten thousand venue no and he's he's going to clubs so what do you guys think in the comment box make sure you guys like definitely subscribe it's your boy dj academics i'm out